So today I plan on installing a washer dryer combo unit in my 2012 Fleetwood Bounder 35K. And I've looked on uh, online and I just haven't seen any good videos that really show the process uh, for this RV. So I thought maybe uh, this would help everybody out. So this is the uh, washer dryer combo that I selected. Uh, it's the Magic Chef uh, model MCSWD20B3. Now you'll find this washer under quite a few different names. Um, I ended up selecting the Magic Chef, um, really features and, and cost. So I know many of you um, have looked at the Splendid models, and if you look at those, they run about, uh, I don't know, $1,200 from, uh, you know, online stores or through your camping stores, um, and they have a one-year warranty. I think you could buy an additional, but uh, the places I've been really didn't even offer that. Magic Chef is um, handled by Home Depot. So the nice thing there is besides the price break, um, I didn't pay 1200, I only paid 695 for this combo. And then for an additional, I believe it was like $135, I got a five year extended warranty and that is an in-house warranty. So they come to your door. Um, so for, you know, less than $1,000, more like $900, I was able to get this washer with a five-year extended warranty. Now, uh, I selected the black model. It does come in white or black. Um, so again, front loader. Um, you can look these up online. They have all your standard features. You see the front panel. Um, all the information is available. Um, it was nice down here as compared to the Splendid. Um, this one actually has your front opening where you can get to your lint trap. I think that's a little easier than pulling the entire front um, bezel off that they do on those models. Um, haven't opened up the, the, the unit yet to see inside the drum or anything. Um, it, it does appear that the hoses are in there, so it does come with your hoses. But what I do want to point out, I saw another video online. Uh, I don't have the gentleman's name, but... I'll try to post in the comments. Um, I do want to thank him. He did a, a service on one of these units or a similar model, and he pointed out a problem where he was not getting um, his clothes to dry. Uh, I know that's a big issue, the vented versus ventless models. Everybody complains about the ventless models. They take so long to dry. Um, and again, that was... That was a big uh, decision I had to make. Did I want to drill a hole in the side of my RV or did I not want to? Do I even have the space for that hole? On and on. Everybody's got those same questions, same concerns. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and go with the vent list. Well, this gentleman pointed out that there was a problem in his unit why it wasn't drying in vent list. Not, I mean, it was taking a really long time. And so I, I popped the top of this unit off. There's like two screws, slide it forward. Uh, or towards the back and the lid comes off and this here is the inside of the unit you got your condensing unit here you got your condenser fan uh, this is where you put in your your soap your dispenser and these is your uh, your valves to dispense that but take a look right here hopefully you can see that this is the line of where the condenser gets its water in a condensing dryer it actually uses water to remove water I know that sounds strange, but um, you need to cool this unit here in order to take the steam out of the unit, condense it back into water, and drain it out the normal drain. And to do that, water has to come through this hose right here. It's going to come along here and go down back here into this condensing unit. Okay, It's just a large plastic bin that the water will collect in. Okay. But if you'll notice, there's a kink in that hose. Okay, so this gentleman pointed out that all you need to do is take this zip tie right here, okay, which simply has a connector, squeeze that connector, push it through, and when you move the hose, you no longer have a kink. 
solves the problem. Now what I noticed was when I released this, this zip tie fell almost exactly into this hole. It appears this was actually designed to have a bracket. This is a threaded hole. It's got a keeper. So my guess is there should be a small plastic bracket or metal bracket that this snaps into to hold this hose this way. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna fabricate one or just leave it hanging. There's already a bracket here holding it. There's another one back here. I don't think this hose is actually gonna go anywhere. And even the vibration of the drum, I don't think it's gonna cause a problem. But if I would leave it connected in the back with a kink, I suspect I'd have the same problem where my, my dryer would not work. Um, the other thing uh, just to mention from his video is if the unit does stop um, working, you, there's certain error codes you'll get. Um, there's reset switches down here um, on the unit. I have to actually find them on this one. But he talks about a reset switch for um, the unit getting too hot. That's typically caused by this condensing unit down here getting filled with lint. So take the top off, pull that out, clean the lint out, put it back. And depending on how many loads you do and how much lint you have will, will impact that. So that's the inside of the unit. I'm going to get it put back together. And then I'm going to show you the inside of the RV and what I had to do there. Okay, so here's the inside of the RV. Uh, this is the master uh, bedroom. And there's a cabinet here on the far end next to the master bathroom that is intended for the washer-dryer combo. Now, I called Fleetwood because I didn't know whether or not my unit was prepared or pre-plumbed for the washer-dryer unit. Based on my VIN number, they told me that I was not plumbed, that I did not have that option on my RV. So I really didn't know what to expect. So inside this cabinet, there is a normally a back panel, same carpet material, and it will be stapled in. So you'll need a screwdriver, carefully pry out the staples. You can pull the back unit off. Lo and behold, um, looks like I got lucky. They actually do somewhat pre-plumb these units. They're not completely ready to go. Um, for example, these are the cold and water, cold and hot water pipes. And you'll see they're simply capped off. They've got a plastic fitting with an insert to prevent any leaks, you know, before you put your washer and dryer in. They also have your uh, drain pipe. This one here, it goes up, go to the top cabinet. You can see it actually is capped off. That's your vent line. This over here, if I can get in there, they've already put a piece of plywood with the electrical outlet and a place where you'll essentially have to cut that cap off, but you would be able to plumb in your drain line. Now, what I noticed, first of all, was that this plumbing or this P-trap here and by the way, you must have a P-trap. Do not install one of these by taking the P-trap out or forgetting to put one in. Remember, a P-trap is what's going to block all the fumes coming out of your gray water tank from getting inside your RV. So you need a P-trap. There's also codes as to how high that P-trap should be from the bottom of the washing machine how high the vent should be, how far, far the drop should be, etc. Um, this washing machine, I believe, is somewhere between 24 and 32 inches to where the drain hose should connect. Well, the top of this cabinet is 35, and obviously the top of that cap is well beyond that. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is lowering this pipe, probably cutting a section out of that to lower this down. But I noticed I have another problem. The width of this cabinet is 27 inches. The washer is 23 and a half. So I have no problem with the width. But the depth from the wall to the front of this cabinet is only about 24 and a half inches. And that's exactly how deep that washer is. So as you can see, there's no way I'm going to be able to install that washer with this plumbing because this plumbing is two inch. Two inch pipe 
outside diameter, I'm not gonna have that room. So taking a look, there's actually a space. You can see where you come up off of your main line, and there's actually a cubby hole or a little cutout right here before you get to your uh, shower unit, which has got a two inch opening. So I think I'm going to cut the pipe down lower, put it at an angle and bring it up through here. And then somehow work in my P-trap, hopefully keeping it close enough to the side. You know, I've got a couple inches to work with, uh, but that should give me the room that I need to be able to put the unit in there and hopefully still be able to uh, keep my louver doors on. If not, um, last thing I'd like to point out is when Fleetwood made these units, they knew that you were going to have to take these cabinets off in order to put your washer dryer unit in. There's, there's no way you're gonna fit it through the opening of the door. That's only about 23 inches. The washer's wider than that. So when they manufactured this cabinet, they screwed it on. So throughout the cabinet, there are three or four screws on each side. You'll take those off, the entire face of this cabinet will come off. Now my idea is, if my washer is too deep and it would stick out, what I will do is I'll put a spacer made of the same material, maybe I can even get it from Fleetwood, and put a spacer and actually pull this fascia or this front of this cabinet out a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, whatever it's gonna take. And I think it'll still look good, you won't notice it. Um, you know, it, it should be fine. Um, and finally, on your top cabinet, you've got uh, a unit that they put in there. This is to hang clothes in, it actually hangs from the top. You're gonna have to take this off, uh, find a new home for it or just no longer use it. Okay, so we'll remove that. And finally, the valves. So I've been debating on what to do for the valves. And my research has uh, come back where I think I'm gonna put in the hammer valves. I know this doesn't require it, but all RVs, when you turn on the water pump, you get a little bit of hammering just from the, uh, the water pump itself. So uh, I'm gonna get the valves that have a small little hammer device on top, and I'm gonna install um, both on both valves, hot and cold. And the big thing I wanna point out is how you connect those valves to this plumbing. So if you remember, if I can get in here, I might have to go to the bottom. These have a plastic cap or plastic fitting with an insert. And I've heard of a lot of people having problems or complaints that their washer leaks or these fittings leak. And the reason for that is if you're going to connect metal to plastic, there's a specific way you want to do that. What you want is you want the metal to be the female side and the plastic to be the male side. So the female actually will go around the fitting on the male and since metal is harder than plastic, it will prevent a leak. But if you use this fitting that they've put here and you actually screw in the metal side of the valve, if you get a screw in valve, over time you're gonna overstress this plastic fitting or if you tighten it down too much and it will crack that plastic fitting and you'll have a leak. I don't believe Fleetwood ever intended for you to use these fittings. I think they intended those simply as a plug until you decide to install a washing unit. So you, what I'm planning to do is cut these clamps off, get rid of these fittings, buy the hot and cold water valves that have the PEX barbs on them, slide them into the hose and put new, new clamps on. And I think that's gonna guarantee me that I won't have a leak. Um, it's possible, like I said, you could get plastic valves and then you'd be going plastic to plastic and not have that problem, you know, between there. Um, if you, you make sure you use the pipe dope and maybe some, you know, Teflon tape, there, you know, there's a certain way to do that. Teflon tape always goes on first and then you go around the Teflon tape with the pipe dope and screw it together and you'll have a better chance of no leak. But I wanted to point that out. All those people that are having a problem, that's probably why. So as I continue this install, um, I'll update 
I'll update you on the next step. Okay, I'm getting ready to start on the, uh, the plumbing, but what I went ahead and did, and this might help you out as well, um, the cardboard that uh, the washer shipped in, turns out um, a Magic Chef does a heck of a job packaging it. They actually had a box inside of a box inside of another box. So they wanted to really make sure that thing made it here in one piece. What I did was I took uh, the inside box and I ended up cutting it down to the exact size of the washing machine. And I did that because as you can see, uh, when you come in here, it's kind of tight, right? You got to go through, you got to go through this door, you know, you got to go through the door to get in the RV. And by carrying in this box, which uh, doesn't weigh anywhere near the 178 pounds, I think <laughs> what's the washing machine weighs, um, much easier. So you carry the box in. Um, my next concern was there actually is a little bit of a bump out here. You know, was I going to be able to make the corner or not? So what I was able to do, um, take the box. Kind of set it in there. Now it's hard to see, but kind of set it in there. Have to go in at a little bit of an angle and I'm able to get all the way. The other thing it allowed me to do is see how much room that I have top and bottom, left and right. Now, originally, um, the bottom had this same kind of little rail all the way around it. And that's what that inside kind of that fake wall, this uh, carpeted wall stapled to. And what I found with mine is if I left that in because my washer is deeper um, than my opening is. And I believe that's because, again, this is a 2012. And my guess is back in 2012, the biggest washing machine was, uh, I think it was 1.7 cubic feet. So they probably weren't as deep as these new two, two cubic feet washers are. So, you know, this is only 18 and a half inches, right? So that's probably the footprint of those old washers, but these new washers have closer to a two foot um, footprint. So that's what was gonna make it difficult. Leaving that lip in there, um, I wouldn't be able to get the washer. I wouldn't have enough room top to bottom. So um, what I ended up doing was removing that all the way around. Well, the nice thing is it's only held in by by some screws here. So you knock out those screws, there might be a couple staples, um, but it gives you all the room. The next thing that I'm going to do, because the next problem I had was the feet of the washing machine were not within this 18 inches. The first foot in the front will be, you know, four inches back, but then my next foot would be back here in the opening. So by taking this rail out, what I'm going to do is just uh, screw in a one by two so it has something to set on. I'm gonna fill this with plywood so I've got a complete deck. And with this being a, you know, a little bit weak, I'll probably put a one by two from here straight to the floor, beef this up. So essentially I'm gonna have an entire platform now um, outside of a little space here. I'm gonna tuck these water hoses over in the corner. And then the next thing is plumbing. So I've cut the plumbing. So I'm taking this entire piece of plumbing out because I'm going to have to redo it. Um, I'm not sure what Fleetwood was thinking or why they did it the way they did. But as I mentioned before, that they had the P-trap clear in the middle of, of the opening here. And then they had where the drain would fit clear up in this cabinet. And if you read the directions on uh, the washing machine, it doesn't want the drain hose that high. It wants it somewhere between 23 and I think 30 or 32 inches high. So they want it down here more in the middle. So what I'm going to do is you can see I cut that pipe off. Take this off. Okay. And I bought a 45, which I'll put on here. And I'm going to run that 45 over till I get into this little cubby hole that's next to the washer because I need the space. The washer is going to go from the front all the way to the wall with probably a half an inch gap, maybe an inch gap all the way around. I don't have room to put a pipe in there. So if I can hide the pipe back here and I can put the P-trap out and tuck it right here in the corner, I think it's going to work because this opening is 27 and a half inches wide and the washing machine is only 23 and a half. 
So if I use my handy dandy templated box and I put this back in here, the way it's going to work, okay? Essentially, I'll have maybe, I'll give it maybe a half an inch or so on this side, but that leaves me with a pretty good gap here, probably three and a half, four inches. So I'll be able to put my drain pipe in that corner and connect it and the washing machine should work. Um, and it works because the, these doors here, you know, you've got more room on the left side than you do the right side. So if you take a look, you know, you've got like three, three and a half inches there. And over here, you know, you are only got half of that. Half is for the, uh, the fascia. So you got about one inch here, and you got about three or four inches here, which is gonna work exactly the way this machine is gonna fit in there. Now, what I still don't know is once I get the machine in there and I tuck it all the way back up against the wall, whether or not I'm gonna be able to put these louver doors on or not. Um, it's gonna be really close. So worst case, I might have to put a little spacer here, you know, just, just build this out and then put my fascia on, which, which is very possible. Um, actually, it looks like I can even do that without having to worry about staining it. If I actually just put, you know, put a one by one in here, you know, drill through it, but it'll bring that entire fascia out, face this off here. I could bring that entire thing out and I might gain the inch that I need. So we'll see as we go forward, but I just wanted to give you an update on where I was at. So here's the plumbing setup that I ended up going with. It's a little different than I originally thought. I'm going to have to tuck both of these pipes here um, back in that cubby hole in order to get the depth that I need for this washer. So it's not quite as complicated as it looks. Uh, it's gonna come up here out of the drain. I'll pipe down in the floor, come around to the P-trap, which will then come up and has a barb in there that'll hook to the drain hose. And the other pipe here starts at the top. Um, it just has to come in, again, to get inside that cubby hole and then it'll come up here to the top, which has just a threaded on piece that uh, was already on there before um, for your vacuum breaker. So I think that's gonna work. I'll get it installed and I'll show you what it looks like when it's in there. Okay, here's another look before I get ready to install um, this piping that I came up with. Originally, I was thinking about installing this where this P-trap right here, would actually be kind of sticking out here on the side, but the washer is gonna be a little bit too close to that. It, it might actually rub. So I ended up uh, deciding not to go that route and instead tuck both the P-trap um, down here below, right as I come off of the, the pipe itself, and then put the, uh, the washer hose line in here as well as the vent line. Again, there's, there's enough room here. There's, there's about uh, four or five inches and it actually tucks back a little bit. So I'm gonna try to get my, my drain right here in the corner and then my vent pipe here, and I'll just extend that all the way up so that I'll be able to see it when I'm up here in the top cabinet in case I'd ever have to replace that vacuum breaker. So let me get uh, this pipe in here and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, before I install this, I wanted to kind of show the details of what this pipe looks like. Um, this piece here is going to come up off the drain. It's going to connect here to the P-trap. And that's going to allow that to go back in the corner, back here in this cubby. And then there will be a, another piece here, this one here, that I will install on top of this pipe, which will allow my vent pipe to also get over. So on a top-down view, this is basically what it's going to look like. These two pipes right here will be back in the corner, and this will go right there on that pipe. Okay, so it all fits right back in that corner. Both pipes will be up there. I can get to the, uh, the P-trap if I had to. Um, I decided to go with just a glue-on P-trap. I don't see that I'll ever need to take that P-trap apart, so I got rid of the one with the, uh, the removable piece. This gives me a little bit more room too. It takes off, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch. So that's kind of the setup, and it's pretty clean. I think the water will flow nice. It's gonna come down here in this sweep, so shouldn't be a problem. And then I've got these two pipes here. Um, this one being the vent pipe, you can see how long that is. You know, it's about, uh, I don't know, 48 inches or so. And this pipe here, which is about 32 inches, 
it'll have a barb on the top then i'll put the washer washing machine hose on and again that hose with the barb needs to be at least 23 inches high and no more than 32 so i've got it somewhere around 27 28 inches so that should uh, give me enough um, you know to meet the code as well as um, not too much so that i don't push all the water out of my p-trap but with this setup you can see the p-trap's actually going to be a little deeper than normal because you've got this piece that comes up and then swoops over so your water level you know will be um, at least to the to the top here of the p-trap um, so that's where you know you should have plenty of water in there um, i wanted to show how i'm going to get this piece in here as you can see um, it's a pretty tight fit it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle you can you can kind of bend this around and then you gotta kind of put it sideways and you can just barely put it in there make the turn and drop straight down and when you get that in there you can see that's exactly how it's gonna fit okay the pipe is installed so here's what it looks like you can see down in there um, wasn't too bad you know it's kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle together I got as much glue together or uh, I guess I dry fitted it first and then once I made sure I marked all my angles and glued as much as I could but I still had to uh, to do two or three of the pipes after they were in mainly these these standoff pipes here uh, which was a little tricky to get my hand down in there but I did get them glued um, again this one here is where the drain the little barbs gonna go on um, tied it so it wouldn't bounce around and also this one here strapped it again that's the one that will be for the vacuum breaker so I'll have access to it if I ever need to replace it um, I'm going to screw this panel on rather than the staples that originally was put on so that should do it next thing will be to install the valves and I'm not sure what I'm going to do here They've got a couple holes, but I think I'm going to have to make my own um, somewhere closer into the corner here so that I have the room with the uh, with the washing machine. Um, so I'll keep you updated. Okay, so I got the uh, washer installed. A um, couple things obviously missing from the video here that I wanted to show was I did install these uh, valves. And... Uh, course mark the uh, the hot and cold um, ended up going with this configuration that got my valves the tightest um, I had to put them back here in the corner because again this uh, washing machine you can see down here goes almost all the way to the back of the wall um, I'm not sure if I can get a picture of the hoses but I ended up buying new hoses um, instead of using the rubber ones uh, these stainless uh, steel hoses here you know they're they're obviously a little stronger but they also gave about a well close to a half an inch tighter radius down here so the ones that come with it are more of a rounded corner and these are more squared off and i was trying to get every um advantage i could um, the next thing here the electrical box this is where i mounted that um real interesting here um these were not punched out they, they were actually solid so i don't know what the deal is there unless the dealer's got some special tool he punches them out but but they're pretty thick um i kind of just made it uh with a dremel it's not the prettiest but it works so i was able to mount the electrical and the same way I, I mounted the electrical wire here down through this side cubby hole and i elected to do that i, I wanted to keep the water and the electrical as far away from each other as possible so um, the other thing I want to note, the um, the hoses or the PEX pipes that came up from the factory that were intended to mount here in, in these holes, um, they were too short by about two inches. So I'm not exactly sure what happened at Fleetwood, but there's no way I could have put these valves even where they were intended to go and still get to those PEX pipes. So I ended up... Uh, redoing them rather than splicing in i thought it would be better if i just uh, redid the entire pipe so i ended up taking out the back of this bottom cabinet so that i could get access to everything which which i recommend anyway if you're going to do this job go ahead and 
take this back panel out, same way it's stapled in all the way around. This will give you access um, to these valves, as you can see, or I'm sorry, the, the plumbing. So you can be able to check whether or not you've got a leak. You know, you're probably gonna do that. You also see a drain here. I did put a drain pan under the washer and ran a drain hose here. And that hose is going to go over here to this cabinet here, which will get me right down into my water um, compartment on the outside. I'm gonna have to either go through where this foam is, or I'll probably just drill a hole next to it. That way, if there ever is a leak, it's gonna drain down into that compartment, which is already meant for water, and it won't have a problem. A um, Couple other things to show. I did reinforce uh, with a couple boards here, this back piece, and I filled in this back piece, which originally was open. I filled that in with some uh, half inch OSB. And the reason is the leg on this washer ends up being back right to that point because again this washer is a little bit deeper so it gave me the support so i beefed that up the reason i put this piece in here is because trying to get this back panel out with this carpet is quite a challenge when you're trying to bend it in two different directions because you've got this this lip all the way around here that board doesn't want to come out so my plan is i'm going to cut that board in half and i'll put it in here one piece screw it in put the other piece screw it in and that'll make it easy if i ever need to take it out to get in here and check you know electrical or plumbing or you know generally just look for a leak so i think that would do it then i ran into my next problem okay so my next problem was my cabinet the normal way these are installed is this wide piece of the cabinet is on this side and the narrow piece is on this side. That's how Fleetwood built this. The problem that I had was when I had this wide piece over here, you couldn't open this drawer. <laughs> so, you know, we got it all installed and found out, hey, it's great, but you'll never be able to put soap in here. So what I ended up doing, took this cabinet face off, flipped it 180 degrees. And fortunately, the, the way they connect this board is not glued it's it's got a uh, what do they call it a mortise joint or you know where the screws go in at an angle on the back side take those out was able to move this up to where it needed to go kind of measure that out and was able to get this and you can kind of tell because this end up here is the rounded edge that would normally be down here but you really can't tell um it, it turned out pretty good um then I put the doors on. So again, I had to take the doors off, flip the doors, measure them out. And I knew this was really going to be super, super tight. Just, you know, barely able to get that in. And what I've decided, I was able to just mount these and move them out just a hair. So when I close them, I'm able to close them without it hitting the washer. And the worst that you have is you have a little bit of gap that you're going to see here from the top. One of these Obviously, it's a little bit warped, but, you know, you've got maybe half an inch. That's, I can live with that. That's, that's completely doable. So when it's all closed up, you know, this is what it looks like. You know, so um, this was an interesting project. Everything along the way uh, seemed to fight me. Um, you know, if you're worried about does my RV have plumbing or doesn't it have plumbing, you know, who cares? Because <laughs> the chances are you're going to be redoing all the plumbing. Um, that's what I had to do. I had to start with those drains, get all them the way I want, tuck them back in this corner. Obviously, I had to mess with the electrical for some stupid reason. They didn't cut out the slots, so I had to do that. Um, I had to redrill the holes where these valves would go. Had to redo the PEX pipe coming up to those valves. Um, so everything along the way I had to do. Um, so if you don't have your RV pre-plumbed, don't worry about it. You're going to end up doing it anyway. But I think what this does prove is that you can fit um, one of these 2.0 new combo washer dryers um, in a 2012 Fleetwood Bounder 35K. And it will work. Um, we've already ran it a couple times. Um, this thing is quiet. I mean, um, if you're worried about it, it makes absolutely 
little noise. You are, you could sleep in here, no problem with this thing running. And even at high RPM, you, you barely felt anything. So I haven't done a full load of clothes. I've thrown in, you know, a few towels, um, ran it through a cycle. Like I said, it, it's really quiet. So um, I think we're going to be pretty happy with it. I just hope I never have to take this thing out of here <laughs> because that's a little bit of a job. So I hope this video helped everybody. If you got any questions, you know, again, put them down in the comments. I'll get back to you and uh, good luck with your install. Um, last thing I would note um, is, you know, originally I considered the vented model and based on the amount of space that I've, I showed you in the back of the washer, there's no way I would have got a vented model in here. That vent would have been right up against the wall. So if you've got the situation that I've got where your cabinet's not very deep, you're going to have to skip the vent and model and go with the ventless, which, which I'm perfectly fine with. I think it'll be good. So again, uh, thanks for watching. I also mentioned that I had put in a drip pan. So if you can see under the washer, there's a drip pan here with a drain in the back. Highly recommend that. Um, now I ended up buying a 22 by 22 because what I saw online was the 24 by 24 actually was 26 by 26. In hindsight, I would probably buy that one because you're gonna cut down the lip to about half of what they're giving you. So this lip right here is three quarters of an inch. It originally was an inch and a half, and I had to cut that down in order to, to get the, the legs or the, the machine basically to fit in there. But the problem is here is one side is not under the pan, the other side is, and that's just because this pan ends up exactly where the legs are. So in hindsight, buy the 24 by 24, or better yet, if you can find a 24 by 22, that would be ideal. Um, so coming off the back of that is a drain hose, and you can basically run it back along with the rest of your pipes. And then what I did was I ran it right here, and I just pulled a little bit of this insulation away, and it comes down directly with your, your water pipes um, your uh, low water drain hoses is what those are. It comes down right along with them so it fits in there perfect. It's going to fall right into your water compartment so if there is a leak you're going to see it in there and you know it's going to be out of your way. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay so I'm starting my first load here. Uh, I put it through a couple quick cycles but this one here I put about I don't know four or five hand towels in there um, some washcloths so it's a small load but I wanted to see you know how the machine would work going through the normal cycle um, I did do the time saver since I'm not really washing anything just kind of seeing what it's like I'll say it's 10 I don't know 15 minutes something like that on the wash cycle I think this said it was just a little under four hours that it was going to take to do a full wash and then a dry um, but I'll be quiet here you can you can kind of hear what it sounds like So it's very quiet. I'm actually running it off of the water pump right now. I'm not hooked up to water. So um, I also ran some quick cycles uh, the other day, right after I got this installed using the generator. No problem. Um, everything works fine. Um, I also want to show this top cabinet. I did make some access panels. This is uh, where the electrical would be. And then this one over here is where the valves are. And also um, where the washer had been, there were a couple shelves. So I repurposed one, put it up here in the top uh, which works out great we found these little uh laundry baskets here at uh, the camping store it's nice because they actually collapse down into uh you know into being flat so they work out great and made the shelf work fit there then i took the second shelf and in the wardrobe here i was able to cut that down a little bit narrower and make a spot to put some shoes so um, still plenty of room to hang the clothes or keep your bedspreads like we have now. So there's an idea. Uh, if you're looking for something to do with those, those drawers, or I'm sorry, those shelves, you can do that. The only thing I didn't do anything with was down here, um, there's kind of this slide out. Looks just like uh, this one up here where you can slide out and hang stuff. I haven't found a new place for that yet. I'm not sure I will, but that's okay. Um, so I'll bring the video back when uh, this thing gets into spin mode. We'll be able to see what the vibration's like. 
and uh, what the noise level is. But so far, everything looks good. Okay, so the machine has gone into the spin. I think this is probably uh, just part of its normal washing. Uh, it hasn't hit the max spin speed yet. I do have my um, jacks down and you can fill a little bit of a bobble. Um, it's not too bad. I think it's really going to depend on how much you're washing. But uh, you know, if you're running this, you got the air conditioner on or something, you're never even going to hear this thing. It's it's quiet. It's it's what you expect. So I'd say it's probably quieter than my uh, LG that I have in the house. So when it gets to a uh, max spin, I'll I'll show that. Here it is, max spin. Just a slight bit of vibration. I actually have not adjusted the feet on this yet at all, so I mean I don't really feel any vibration. I can see a slight bit here. Yeah, you can feel a slight vibration. But nothing's gonna shake you out of bed or anything, so. Again, I think this will depend on how many uh, clothes you have in there, what type of clothes. But for these towels, which obviously are going to absorb a lot of water, it's pretty good. So if I walk into the other room, I don't have this slide out. You literally do not hear it at this end. Then there's no vibration at all. So. That's the refrigerator. Make a clicking noise. All right. So there you have it. I'll wait the uh, three hours and see how this comes out for dryness. Okay, so this just finished. This was supposed to take uh, almost four hours. It took two and a half hours. And I think that has to do with the light load. So let's take a look. Um, yeah, it's totally dry. Um, there's no, there's no water um, at all. I would say this is, is dry as I would expect uh, for my dryer in the house. So again, small load, but uh, did a great job. Yeah, you can see there's um, there's no water. It's completely dry to the touch and it literally just finished. So a um, little bit of water down here. That was the only thing, um, knowing from my, my unit in the house to make sure that you clean that up. Leave the door open, also leave the, um, this tray open. Um, if you don't want to get mold and smell in here, but not very happy. Um, did a good job. So, um, I think this is going to work.